Anyway, but how am I going to do equations and everything else with Google Drive uh, and Google Docs if I don't have an equation on here? Well, good thing for, for you, there is a plugin it's called GMAP. And this plugin will actually go into your Google Docs, and you can use LaTeX, which is a programming language for math, to write the equations. But it also has the same buttons that you find in the old Word um, math pack. Just curious, how many people know LaTeX? And this gives Mark a chance to come and sit. How many people know LaTeX? Anyone? OK, there was one person last time, so. It's apparently easy. I don't get it. Don't worry. I can't do it either. Um, so Google Docs, with GMath being used, it's great because it'll also do charts for you, and you can embed those into your document. Google Forms. This is I, if there's a piece of the Google uh, Google Apps for Education that I can't live without, that would be Google Forms. The reason is, if you're doing a data class, really fast and easy to get some data from your students. So you can actually create a quick form, collect that data, and you can analyze it. Great for exit tickets as well. And it's also interesting because this year they added a quiz feature to Google Forms. So now you can actually make up a quiz with a grading scheme, with the answers already pre-programmed, throw it out online. Kids can now take that quiz at their leisure and keep taking it, taking it until they have some sort of mastery over that topic. So it's a great way to quiz kids if you're looking to give them some sort of formative testing, but you could also move it into some sort of assignment. Google Classroom. Probably one of the best messaging systems I find for uh, a classroom. Uh, horrible for marking, right? How many people are using Google Classroom? Just curious. Okay, so you know exactly what I mean. The marking part of it is absolutely horrendous, but document management. See, I love the eyebrows. Everybody does that. Everybody. Like, yes, document management. Because once you hand in, that, give out that assignment, what ends up happening is you set it up so everybody gets their own copy. It tacks their name onto the title, so there's no more lost document who does this belong to. And then the second thing is, it keeps track of who's handed in and who has it. And then you can email the kid who has it. It is fabulous for keeping track of that stuff. Uh, Cam Scanner. Okay, this is the one that blows your mind. Do you have, how many people have used Cam Scanner? Yes, all right. If you're on a computer, you might want to look this up. This is the app for today. You're going to put it on your phone, and what it does is it allows you to photograph a sheet of paper. It will then take that trapezoidal shape and make it square again. It will increase the contrast so that there's black ink on white paper instead of gray on darker gray. And if it's typed, it will do optical character recognition and make it searchable, and you can save it to your Google Drive. Whoa, I'm going to show you an example of this because it's so amazing for, for actually getting kids to hand in handwritten notes. When you think about math, you often think, I have to do this on paper by hand with a pencil. Cam Scanner allows the student to actually photograph it and send it to you. I love this thing. Uh, and then these two things together, YouTube and Edpuzzle. Uh, we are extremely lucky in this board. There's still a lot of boards that don't have access to YouTube. And because of that, they've had to do workarounds. For example, I don't know if you do this, but you can actually grab a video, drop it into your Google Drive, and about 15, 20 minutes later, it will actually play inside Google Drive without having to add a player. So there is a video player built right into Google Drive. So that's what a lot of teachers are doing. But for us, we can actually use YouTube. And the reason I love this is that I can actually use Edpuzzle. If you haven't been able to try Edpuzzle. Oh, wow. Okay, what Edpuzzle is, is this. Do you remember the days, I'm going to just look back at this, Chris, for a second. Remember the days, <laughs> you'd hit play on the VCR and then you'd just stand there like this, and you'd wait for that part where you knew it was coming, and then you'd press pause, and then you get to teach for a minute or two, and then you hit play, and then you wait again, and then you hit pause, and then you ask a question, and you wait for the answers, and then you hit play. Does this all sound familiar? <laughs> Yeah, not as much fun. What I love about Edpuzzle, it'll let you do that exact same thing with a YouTube video, but you only have to do it once. So you can trim a video, make it shorter. If you think the person talking doesn't make any sense, you can record your voice and replace all the audio. Or my favorite, I've never done that because I don't want to listen to myself. Um, you find the part in the video, you hit the button, and the video will pause, and then you can record what it is that you were going to say to the class. And then it'll restart playing again after it finishes. 
Then you can also move further along in the video and add little multiple choice questions or short answer questions to it. So the kids can actually fill it in and we'll actually record it, record the data. This is wow, wait till you see this. I gotta, I'll show you afterwards. And only one person I saw, this is great. Okay, so let me show you the guy who actually did the work. I just showed them those tools, got excited about the tools, he got excited about the math. So this is Dr. Young. Um, he is, I call him an innovator. Don't let the gray hair fool you. I mean, you would think he would be the one, I've been doing this for, for so long, I'm gonna keep doing it the same way, no way. His passion is really about engaging passive students. In other words, he just doesn't want to teach the lesson. He wants to make sure everybody is actively learning. And that's why I get such a kick out of working with him. Because he, will, he won't come here to speak to you. <laughs> I'll tell you that. That's why I'm here, because I thought what he did was so awesome, but there's no way he's coming in here. So I'm actually presenting some of the stuff he's done with his class, and I just wanted to show it to you. And so what he's done is he's taken those, uh, those tools and actually flipped his classroom. And the model he was using was the WISC model, which is watch, summarize, and question. And so instead of the usual watch this video and answer a few questions, he actually thought it would be better if the kids watched it, understood it, created a summary note, and then were able to generate questions from it. In other words, if I can tell you what I don't understand or if I can generate a question, that could be a possible test question for a student in the future. In other words, can I explain what it is I've learned? And he tried this last year. He did it with the functions. He did it with the four U's first. Uh, the functions in first semester and then with calculus and two college courses in second semester. Um, one of his things that he was worried about when he, when he was doing this, like it was a big plunge for him. And he really thought, okay, could keep doing it the way I've been doing it. I, it's a known thing, I know how it's gonna play out. He's really concerned about student involvement and or participation. In other words, if they didn't do the work, how is he gonna compensate for that? And he thought about it for a while and he said, oh, it's simple. Oh, you didn't do it last night? Okay, there's a computer, go do it now. All of a sudden, he's able to work with kids that are ready for him, and those kids were never allowed to fall behind. So. And WISC, he was worried about WISC if students would buy into this because it meant a lot of work on their end. Let me show you the example of the work that they put into this. Okay, so what is a WISC? Students were able to complete online, uh, sorry, students complete online and submit and in advance of the classroom lesson. So in other words, they watch something as an introduction and then they summarize what it is they learned. Then the video summarized into a study note plus documenting what they didn't understand. So they were able to feed back to him what they don't get. And he was actually able to use this for an assessment. You may or may not choose to do that. That's the important thing. You can decide if it's formative or summative, but he's thinking that maybe this is more of a formative thing. And the part that I really loved about the add-on he had here was the very last thing was the challenge question. And that was that whole metacognition piece where they have they thought deeply about the lesson content. Did they get it and could they use it and explain it? So the tools he used. This is, I'm using the, uh, the calculus example because it's the best looking one. Like, wait till you see this work, it's unbelievable. I sound like all something dropped on it. It's big me. Um, <laughs> it's bigly awesome. Um, so on the Google Classroom, he used the about page for just about everything. So he put this course profile there, he put the unit outlines. He gave links to uh, practice quizzes so that students can go and do, do some formative quizzing. Any test materials, for example, if there was a table or something that they needed for a test. Um, he also had links to the online textbook. In other words, the, the math department bought online textbooks for all their textbooks, so now the kids don't have to cart it around, they have a link to it, and they always knew where to find it. It was a Google Classroom. And this is the one that I worked with him, uh, and when he discovered this one, it just made his life so much simpler. Link to course content. In other words, in Google Drive, you can create a folder. Then what you do is you share that folder with anyone with the link. You then put that link on the About page in Google Classroom, which means every time a kid clicks on it, it opens up the folder. Anything inside that folder is automatically shared. So as he dumps stuff into the folder or made corrections, 
it was always up to date in every kid's folder. And that's probably instead of trying to do one document at a time, just work with a folder and move stuff in and out. Uh, his flipped lessons, uh, he did it through videos, uh, websites, handouts, as well as classroom instruction. So this was only one component of it. Uh, he used the WISP for evidence of learning, but the big piece for him again was when he did the WISP, he found his in-class time changed quite dramatically. He found out kids were actually able to do homework and they were able to get a lot of extra help. The biggest thing was one-on-one. -on -one considerably more one-on-one -on -one time with students. As I said, a kid that maybe didn't do it, well, they're getting it done, so they're catching up on their homework. And he has an opportunity to speak to that kid. This kid over here didn't understand it, has time to work with that student. So he's able to, to work with the groups at each level that they were at. Okay, this is an example of his wits. So he used Google Forms, and so this is the form. So in this one here, I'll just go through it real quick. Uh, directly on this form, you can type, scan, copy, photograph. That's where Cam Scanner came in. So a lot of them did the work on paper, photographed it with Cam Scanner, and then uploaded it. Cam Scanner had to digitize the documents. He gave it a time that it had to be handed in. Um, it was going to count. The part the kids weren't too keen on, this is because remember, we're talking about a 4 you group. He was marking them levels. They did not like that. Uh, they want numerical grades because it's all about university applications to them. So what information did he collect? Oops, I shouldn't have done that. Um, what information he collected? He got their name. He actually figured out the unit and day, so he had it set up about what the assignment was. He embedded the video he wanted them to watch right on the page. So in the form, he can embed the video, so the video plays. This lesson will take a look at the intersection of three planes and the first several pages don't. Okay, so the video was there, so there's no student saying, I can't find the video. Then the part that's the great part about his list. Oh, no, let's see, let's keep that a bit. Summarize the video into your own study notes. Be engaged, be thorough. Watch the videos, listen to the audio, no distraction, earbuds in. Copy the ideas, formulas, diagrams, examples in a legible and organized fashion. Don't crowd your work. Rewind and replay as needed. Upload your, to your Google Drive and paste the link in the text box here. Make sure I can view or edit your link. Kids were still sharing things with him, but forgetting to share things with him. So he would get the link, and he couldn't open it, and there was just some follow-up in the class. The part I love was the next one. What didn't you understand? Kids could type anything they wanted here. And then all of a sudden, his next lesson was planned. <laughs> and then the last one, create a challenge question with a topic for someone like yourself taking the course next year. So in other words, he's actually getting them to think about their learning. Now, I, this is the part that will blow your mind, because this blew me right out of the water when I saw a sample of student work. So here's the student work. They watched the video and then created these notes. This is the, and then they were able to scan it. Now, I don't get it, I won't lie to you, because I haven't done this since, as I said before, 1986 was the last time I did this. <coughs> Can I just look at it? Like, just look at it. It's so spectacular. <laughs> and then we finally get down, now we're in the matrices. Now, Biggest takeaway, this video was too long, it was nine minutes long. Kids don't like anything, like myself, over four minutes. So if you can find shorter videos, find them, or split up your topics. Because this is just one step study now. And then there's the challenge questions. And what I love about it, the kids made up the challenge questions, highlight the answer, now I have a test question. Why not use the kids' questions? They thought about it, they get it, why not use them? Now, this is pretty neat, if you ask me. I love the fact that he was able to get this quality of work. And you're going, does it all look like that? Well, no, and I'll show you some examples. The best part about the WISP and using a form is that it throws everything into a spreadsheet. He asked kids to give him the link. So the spreadsheet actually caps all the submissions. Now, I'm not actually sharing this spreadsheet with you. Uh, I'm just going to show it to you today because it does have student names and stuff in it. He's got timestamps for when I'm standing down. 
he's got the user, in fact, the student email addresses. Uh, he's found out, he's collected their names, he's got the, the units and everything else. But then we've got some of the questions answered. So let's just pick the first student here, the first one who got it done. What does their note look like? Well, it's not as pretty, but it works, doesn't it? So this was scanned by Cam Scanner. And you can see how it straightens out the edges. It does a very good job of creating that contrast so it's easy to read. So he can read this right online looking at the student work. And then there's that challenge question again. And if kids don't get it, he has an opportunity to actually get feedback about them not getting it. So for example, uh, what was a little confusing to me was highlighted in the study notes. Just confused me how we get a unit vector from multiplying the vector from one divided by its length. He's now got a lesson in that question. I think that's brilliant. All of a sudden the kids are telling you what they don't know and you get to work with them. So, should we try another one? Let's try another one. Because I have to look at all of them and sometimes they're... Okay, so here's one. Again, just scan these are photos that were just dumped into a Google Doc. So student work, again. Uh, let's try one more. Oh, they didn't get, see, there's an example of them not sharing properly. Uh, one more. Okay, this student actually shared all their notes, and again, the photographs of the notes. Maybe not as well done as the other. So, again, what was great about that spreadsheet, he could uh, had the ability to actually review sources of confusion before beginning the classroom lesson. So he could actually see where the mistakes were. And it was easy to grade because he had, a, he had a student work right there in front of him, wherever he was. Concerns, what, does, what are some of the concerns that came from this? Students assume a greater responsibility for their own learning. In other words, I have to be motivated enough to watch the video and make my own study notes. It's doing homework and students must be comfortable with the technology. If they're not comfortable with the technology, it's going to be really hard to hand stuff in. So, uh, he did get feedback from students as well. This is the part that I find so shocking, and I'm going to ask these students in a second. He did this with the class. You would think kids would love to do this at their own leisure, whatever they want. No, they want chalk and talk. Half the class wanted him to stand at the front and lecture at them. Ladies, you're in a math class. Do you want your teacher to talk to you or do you want to watch a video and make some study notes? I would want the teacher to talk to me because um, my teacher used this um, technique in grade 9 and it didn't really work didn't for work me. didn't work for you? No. And for you? Same example. See? It's interesting. You can't use it all the time. What it's good for, I find, is introductions. As a, as a former science teacher, for me, it was about dealing with those misconceptions that they had before you started. In other words, I want to find out what they already got wrong and then work with those things. So, lists are great for introductions. The kids, again, did not like the level grading. They wanted numerical grades. And uh, Mr. Dr. Young, he's also my son's math teacher, and I love him. Like, he's very, very communicative. In other words, he sends out a newsletter every two weeks. And so he communicates with parents all the time. And so he's always, when he was working through this last year, always asked for parents to give him feedback. One parent gave him feedback. And the only feedback he received was too much time spent learning content this way. In other words, they thought there was too many lists. And it wasn't an effective way for his child to learn. Well, we have two examples right here that they didn't like that. They would prefer that whole chalk and talk. Thing. And that was the only feedback. So where is he going to go with this for this year? He's going to integrate Edpuzzle a lot more because Edpuzzle is so amazing for trimming video and inserting questions and putting your own dialogue. Also, moving away from the study notes and going to skeleton notes. In other words, with Google Classroom, create your skeleton note, then you can hand it out to, as an assignment to your class, puts their name in the title, they fill it in, and then send it back to you. And the whole thing in Google Classroom well, you can find out who's done it, who hasn't done it. And then he all wants to keep doing more Google Forms. He needs to create more quizzes for kids to give themselves feedback. Now, anybody here seen Edpuzzle? Wait. No one? 
of just, oh yeah, we did this question. Now let me show it to you. This is Ed Puzzle. So let's just go to YouTube. Uh, let's, oh, there's a giant hand. First, later. Okay, what I love about this, when you install Ed Puzzle, you get this new button in YouTube. It just adds this button. So now when I click it, what it'll do is it'll open it up in Ed Puzzle. And I have a couple of choices. My first choice, by the way, when am I done? 123, so I have until 130, right? Okay, I'll do it quick. Look at this. I can trim the video, I can make it short. Now that the video is shorter, I've trimmed the edges off. Um, if I don't like the way the person talks, I can replace the entire audio track. <coughs> it. On the other hand, I'm more likely to add a note. So what happens is I move this to where, oh, okay, I want you to really pay attention here, so I just click. Okay, click, so there we record. Please record. Why is it not recording? Okay, it's not recording, but it should be recording. Oh, show me how, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay, it's not working for me right now for some reason. So what you'll do is what will happen is the video will pause, and then you record your own narration or things that you want them to notice. And then the very end would be where you put your quizzes in. So you can drop a quiz anywhere you want. So I think it's easier if I just go back and show you one that I've done. So in this example, uh, the students would start watching the video. So the video would start playing. And you can see where I've inserted a little quiz. So the students are watching this, so I'm testing for understanding as they go. And now I get the quiz. Is this good? Yes or no? <laughs> so I hit yes, and I hit continue. Now the video continues. Um, I can also stop and do narration. So let me just back up. What I love about this is the progress bar. It, okay, you've seen this before. It's called witness testing. Okay, and it's exactly the same. It will give you track whether or not they've watched it to the end. You can even select unskippable. So they can't jump to the end. Then, that little quiz where I wrote, yes, this is good, I got 100% on it. So I understood it, and it tells me when I did it. So it actually keeps track of all of that. And then my other favorite part is this button right here. So I just click post, it opens it up in Google Classroom, and then I can pick the classroom I want them to, to do this in. In other words, that video that I created is reusable. Okay, come on, that's pretty loud. <laughs> I thought cam scan was gonna impress you. This one really impressed me. I'm sorry. So that is um, Ed Puzzle. I just can't get over how useful it really is. And if you're not using Google Classroom, you can still get away with it. There's the link. Or if you have a web page you want to embed the video, you can do that as well. So there's different ways of sharing it. So Ladies and gentlemen, that's an example of flipping the classroom in math, but as you can see, you can do it just about anywhere. Uh, the idea of Edpuzzle, Google Classroom, in combination with forms, the cam scanner, you can start mixing up what it is that you're doing in class. Students do like the chalk and talk, but they don't want that all the time. You probably don't want to do that all the time. Some of the stuff can be prepackaged. In other words, instead of just having that video to be passive, why not put those questions in? Okay, thank you very much.